The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Empowered by the viewers of Life Today, our mission teams explore the world for areas of need. On this special episode, we join our missionary partners in the heart of Africa as they reflect on their journey to South Sudan and Uganda. And you know, I've been on these, these trips before and I can honestly say I've not seen it anything like this. These are mothers who, just like you, just like me, would do anything for their children. Find out how we can offer miraculous hope to those in need. Coming up next. Welcome to Life Today. I'm really excited to welcome you to the show today. We're here in uh, northern Uganda. We've been in Sudan and, and, and Uganda this week, just traveling all over. I've got my wife Terry with me and uh, James's grandson, Luke Redman. And we're just really excited to be able to share a little bit with you of what our week has entailed, the things that we've seen, the, the heartbreaking stories the reality of what people are facing here each and every day as they struggle to survive. And, you know, Luke, uh, Terry, you, you guys have, I mean, we've been through it this week, um, just seeing people who, who literally have lost absolutely everything, who their homes are gone. They're living under trees. I mean, just a makeshift shelter under some trees because they're trying to find somewhere where there's, there's food and water. And Luke, I'm really interested to, to know what, how this has impacted your heart, what yeah. you've seen. As you know, I mean, from, from such a young age, um, my grandparents, as well as, you know, your parents, yeah. who I've referenced for years as my African parents, mm -hmm. you know, have yeah. just have been the reason um, I've had such a heart mm -hmm. for the poor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've been on these, these trips before, and I can honestly say I've, I've not seen it anything like this. Mm -hmm. um, just the extreme poverty, mm -hmm. um, the, the injustice of literally these people. I mean, they didn't ask for this. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were born into this. Mm -hmm. um, no, no food, mm -hmm. um, children just sick because of that. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've, I've just not, I've not seen it like this ever. I've never been on a trip like this that, that we are in such a crisis. They're, they're broken. I mean, yeah. and they can't do anything about it. I mean, mom's walking three and a half weeks to, to try and just get help for their child. It's beyond um, heartbreaking. And it's a genuine brokenness, you know. I mean, these mothers, you, yeah. you know, these mothers don't cry easy. And to see the tears running like down some I've of their seen, cheeks. What I've seen in the last few days in, in, in the line of these mothers mm. and what they have to face in mm. terms of that, that seeing that brokenness mm. and witnessing mm. that firsthand. Because these are mothers who would do anything for their children. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but they have nothing. Mm. So yeah. they don't even have food. Yeah. And then that feeling Too of often. despair that mm. they, as a mother, they failed their child. Yeah. So they're yeah. just so traumatized and just no, that feeling of worthlessness and yeah. brokenness to a degree. And, and that is, I mean, for me in some ways, like two themes that have come out as, as we've spent this week and we've traveled around have really been brokenness. Yeah. That, that, that absolute brokenness to see mothers that are just broken as they've buried their child. Some of them just a few days before we got there. The other was hope. And the fact that hope really is a game changer. It's not just a nice to have for these people and yet we are that hope. And I think that's an important piece to clarify is that it's, it's, they don't have hope unless we're here. But they know we're here. They see what we're doing. They know that we can extend the heart of God and the hands of God to them. And that's what's giving them that hope. And yet then the, almost the sense of terror and fear in me that well, what if we don't have the resource to honor that hope, to actually make it possible to, 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 to ensure that our programs continue here, that we provide that bowl of food, that, that, that gift of life, because it genuinely, genuinely is a gift of life. Oh, I mean, the, the, the difference when, you, when we visit villages that might not have mission feeding yet, yeah. you know, they've, they've not yeah. experienced that versus mm -hmm. the ones that 
that have. Absolutely. I mean, the life and the and the children that are in yeah. that in that village is just mm. you can't even you can't even compare it. I mean, you just see that difference, that transformation, and that's why we'd we'd like you to just watch this piece as we take you on a little bit of a, a journey through our journey this week. Uh, let you see the places we've been, what we've been through to get there, but most importantly, how mothers are struggling, how their children are fighting for life each and every day. Watch this piece. You know, 200,000 plus children die every single month of malnutrition alone. They die in a village like this. They get buried with a little wooden cross with their name etched on it. Over the past week, our mission team has traveled throughout South Sudan and Uganda, overwhelmed by the devastation of countless families fighting an unrelenting crisis. We, we've sat with mothers here today, mothers that are, are grieving the loss of their children, and they've explained to us that those children have, have died because of malnutrition, because of starvation, literally, because there is no food in this village. There's no livestock, there's no crops, there's no food at all. Our team witnessed further heartache in the malnutrition clinics, where mothers have risked long journeys with their children for just the hope of a life-saving miracle. I've been in places like this. Mm. <sighs> now you have your own kid that's mm. about the same age as all them, and it just, yeah. oh. You just can't fathom if your own child's going through something like this. With these dire circumstances spread throughout South Sudan, thousands of mothers have embarked on the treacherous journey seeking food. It's not God's heart to see mothers wonder what they're gonna feed their children when they wake up in the morning. So today, I'm asking you to be the solution, be the answer to these mothers and children's prayers. You've just seen and had a taste of a bit of our journey this week. The, the places we've been, the, the, the villages and, and the mothers that, that have interacted with us. You've seen the conditions that people are living in and the absolute heartache, the reality of what life is for so many of these, these families here. Yeah, it's, it's broken our hearts this week. I mean, look, I know from that first walk-in, I mean, I saw you walk into that first clinic and just, I just could see that heartbreak. I know that feeling. You see your child there. It's, you know, I've, I've not been here since I've been a dad. Yeah. And to walk in a place like that, um, and see kids that are the same age as, as my precious little girl um, who are on the verge of literally dying, mm -hmm. not because of some unique or rare disease, yeah. lack of food. Um, to walk in there and just see these mothers who have done everything for their child um, to, to help their child because that's, it's, in, it's ingrained in us as parents, you know? So to, so to see that, it was, it was beyond overwhelming. And you know, it, it, you know what we're doing is 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 real and is and is changing lives. Well, and I think you know, once you become a parent, it it does have that shift. You have that change because suddenly now there's that identification of, but that could be my child. This could this could be my life, and how how grateful would I be, okay, to to the people that make it possible to save my child's life. And that's literally what's happening. And I, and I know your relief, because I know when we walk into to clinics like that, when we go into villages where, where the conditions are, are that terrible, that life and death, it's, it's a crisis is actually the only way to explain it. How, when that's the, the, the case, and I know we're there, somehow in the back of my heart, as much as it's breaking, I feel this, it's gonna be okay. We're here. Yeah. You know, even the one we went to, um, maybe the second day we were here, yeah. you know, we, our team was there doing screenings, basically, you know, mm -hmm. checking on kids, seeing, making sure their health was okay, who's malnourished, you know, what, what can we do, yeah. do for them? But, you know, I also had in that same village a mom come over and, and grab me because her child was lying inside there about yeah. to die. Yeah. yeah. About to die. Yeah. And she just saw me and our whole team as, hey, maybe, maybe we can do something. Mm -hmm. and, and we can. Yeah. 
And we can do something. Absolutely. But I just think, what if we would have gotten there? You know, yeah. just a few days earlier, what, what would have happened? Mm -hmm. It's beyond... Speaking to that, Luke, I mean, um, we spoke to that woman who had arrived into the village where we were feeding mm -hmm. and just had such regret when we spoke to her because she had had a baby die mm -hmm. um, previous mm -hmm. to that, do you remember? Mm -hmm. And she just said, I just regret because if I had come here sooner, maybe my child would still be alive. Sure. So and that just shows... And they, and they have to, you know... It mm. takes a long time to get mm. to, you know, some of these places in such remote parts of oh, yeah. the world. I mean, we, you saw where, where we had, the way we had to travel to even get to some of these places. Crazy. So many, even on the way to these clinics, they, they risk their, their children's lives just by traveling. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Many of the children die between the village and the clinic, mm -hmm. or between the village and where uh, villages that, that we are providing mission feeding or we, we're meeting the needs of, of that community, they actually die on that way, on the way there. And that's why, I mean, that mother, it, it, it wasn't a, oh, come see. It's, it's a reach out that almost, I feel like it goes in and it grabs your heart and it says, please, please, you gotta help me. You, you, you gotta, you gotta come and see my child. You gotta help me. There's that, that desperation that says, you are my only hope. You, you, you're my only hope. I'm, I'm relying on you. I'm counting on you. Without you, I don't know how this situation's going to end. And that's why I need you to understand today just how desperately we need you to help us in the conditions here, in the villages that we're finding. We need you to open your hearts today. I need you to give the best gift that you can give because what you need to understand is your gift today is not just a gift that is gonna change something. It is a gift of life because we're dealing with life and death. That mother reached out. She said, Luke, come here. Come and see my child. Please come help me. Well, I'm reaching out to you right now and I'm asking you, please help us to help these children to save their lives. In impoverished and drought-stricken areas of Africa, children are suffering. The need is great and without food, they face severe malnutrition, even death. Through Life's Mission Feeding Outreach, you can save lives by feeding and caring for children currently suffering from starvation in parts of Angola, Mozambique, and South Sudan. With previous reserves gone and mission feeding helping in areas of great famine, we urgently need your support to replenish food supplies to reach the 400,000 children who are counting on us. Your life-saving gift of 30, 50, or $100 will help feed and care for three, five, or 10 children. With your gift, we'll send you The James Code by O.S. Hawkins, an outstanding devotional to help you go from knowing about God to living for God and putting your faith into action. You'll also enjoy this beautifully crafted leather bookmark. With your gift of $100 or more, please request the Passion Translation Bible. This New Testament edition, including Psalms and Proverbs, ignites the passion of the Bible to modern readers by merging the passion of God's heart for His children with the life-changing truth of His Word. Finally, with your gift of $1,000 or more to help feed and care for 100 children, be sure to request our commemorative bronze sculpture, Safe in the Shepherd's Arms. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. Our mission team recently traveled to South Sudan. While there, Luke Redmond and Isak Pretorius encountered desperate mothers concerned for their children's lives. One mother literally begged them to come into her hut. What they discovered was heartbreaking. I can't even imagine what it would be like as a mother to sit here with their child that is literally dying in front of them. We've been in this village most of the day and this mother who, who saw us was just like, pulled us into her home. And when we walked in here, it was almost like an overwhelming sense of just, of death. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with, with nothing to, to give them right now or nothing that, that, we could, that we could do right now in this moment. Um, but, but she thought we could. It's sad to note this mother who caught the attention of Luke and Isaac is just one of hundreds of mothers whose children are suffering and in many cases dying because of the food crisis that is ravaging this area. This mother was so right to pull us in here because we are the only lifeline for her 
and her child, but I need you to know that without you, we cannot do this. We cannot save this child's life. We cannot honor this mother's call. So I'm calling out to you today from the bottom of my heart. I'm asking you, please help us bring life to this child and so many other children in this village that so desperately need it. You've just seen what a crisis the situation is right here and why we so desperately need your help. And I really hope that, you know, as you've seen that and you continue to watch the show, that you will do whatever you can do, that you'll dial that number, you'll give that gift, you'll give that gift of life today, please. You know, we, as we've continued our journey here, we've just seen you know, so many different things. I mean, it, it's so heart-wrenching. I know yesterday, I just, I mean, I, I saw how the, the tears were just, flowing down your cheeks as, as you encountered some of what you were experiencing with these families that have just lost absolutely everything. Yeah, it was horrifying um, when you and I were having a, a discussion and I spotted that little boy over mm. your shoulder mm. Mm. Um, who was just staring at us whilst we were talking and um, he just sparked my curiosity. So mm. I walked over to him and mm. sat next to him and noticed on his wrist he was wearing one of those white bands. Yeah that said SC, mm. separated child. And uh, knowing ah. that, that that child had been either witness to, to mm. the slaughter of his parents, like so many of the other kids there, mm. Mm. Um, or that he was there alone and mm. scared, mm. I, I just, it, it just really yeah. attacked the, the, the mother heart in me and the yeah, terror. And, and I was asking him just simple questions. Mm. How old are you? Mm. And he was moving, trying so hard to move his lips to get words mm. out, but his, his lips were just tremoring and no mm. words were coming mm. out. This mm. little guy was so traumatized yeah. that he was the mute. The and pain of... of <sighs> yeah, I mean, what do you yeah, say to yeah. that? Like, and, and then you look around you and you just see that there are just hundreds more mm. just like him and that story is just... Yeah. One of so many. And I mean, so many of these kids experiencing trauma that, that no child should experience. I mean, we saw that, that young girl, the tears running down her cheeks, 15 years old. She's now in charge of that household. She grabbed her little brother of six and her sister of three and somehow found the courage inside of her to pick them up and to run. As she had just seen her parents and her one-year-old brother murdered in front of her and then gets to that center where we are, where life is, where we're able to extend that hand and now starts to try and rebuild her life. And the reality is that for so many of these children, when we ask them, what is your greatest need? They say food. Yeah. The first thing they say, having seen what they've seen, the terror they've been through, nothing but the clothes on their body is all they have. And yet the first thing they say is, what I need most is food. And I want you to watch this uh, piece now as, we share a little bit more of the reality of what we've seen here. I know that this is going to help you to connect your heart as our hearts have been so connected to the, the lives that are so traumatized here, to this absolute crisis situation. Watch this piece now, please. <laughs> South Sudan is in crisis. The extreme heat and arid landscape are oppressive and unforgiving, leaving people of the land defenseless against the famine that afflicts them. The vegetation here is so scarce, mothers have no choice but to feed their children wild fruit that often proves to be toxic itself. As a result, countless children have lost their lives to poisonous food and malnutrition. Their mothers are left with both immense grief and crippling fear over the health of their remaining children. For Nagu, the loss is very fresh, but mourning her daughter is a distraction she can't afford as she fights for the survival of her baby, who has also fallen ill. <laughs> Mama, I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go
To this mother, this is the very last thing she has. Her child is the last of what she's got. She's lost her husband. Just three days ago, she buried her four-year-old child. I can't begin to, to imagine what it would be like to, to live in this environment. We cannot bring mission feeding here unless you do what you can do. Doesn't it just break your heart to see how these people are trying to live, how they're just trying to survive for many of them? And the, the reality of what a crisis, an absolute emergency this is. I mean, Luke, we've, oh, I've, seen, I've seen it all, all on you, just all over you this week, you know, just that impact, how it, how it hits you square in the heart, you know? Oh, I mean, you don't even have words to describe it. Something so simple, but causing so much pain. Mm -hmm. Something so simple as, as food, you know, could do this to somebody. Mm -hmm. It's not just some, you know, thought up thing on the other side of the world. No, these are real lives, real people mm -hmm. that are dying every day or having, you know, at risk of dying every day because nothing but lack of food. The situation is real. Very. You've come, you've seen it. Very. The mothers are real, okay? And the reality is that some of their children, it's still a real fight. Others, that fight's been lost already. It's yeah. over. Many have lost one child, mm. but they have another one. And we can still save yeah. that one. And that is why I, I really appeal to you from the bottom of my heart today. You know, it's, I fell apart a little bit yesterday because too many of those memories flood back. Too many children in my lifetime that I've seen, too many mothers I've spoken to whose hearts are broken. Talking to mother after mother who have buried child after child, one who sat and literally in desperation with tears flowing down her cheeks explained the fear, the fear of losing that last child, of losing her everything, her whole world because all she has left, husband gone because of no food, child gone because of no food, last child, the only thing she has to hang on to and she looks me in my eyes and I see this hope that says, please, Please, you're my hope. You're my only way. You're the only way that my world somehow stays just a little bit together. And I need you to understand today that you are my only hope. You see, we're here. We've been asked by the international agencies to be here and to respond to this crisis, and we're here. We just need you to help us to take that last step, and that's why I'm reaching out to you. I'm looking at you today as that mother looked at me with an absolute urgency, with a broken heart. And I'm saying to you, please, do whatever you can do. You need to do it today, though. You need to give that special gift, something over and above what you'd normally do. Give that 30, 50 or $100 today to save three, five or 10 children. But I'm asking you to do even more than that because we need you to do something special today. We need you to do a gift that is over and above. We need you to make a sacrificial gift today. A gift that says, I will save as many of those lives as I possibly can. I will express God's heart and I'll extend God's hands. I'll save that child. I'll help that mother and I'll bring life, life through my gift. Please help me today to honor our promise to these mothers. I made it on your behalf and I need you to make that promise real. You give the best gift you can give today. You give the gift of life. In impoverished and drought-stricken areas of Africa, children are suffering. The need is great and without food, they face severe malnutrition, even death. Through Life's Mission Feeding Outreach, you can save lives by feeding and caring for children currently suffering from starvation in parts of Angola, Mozambique, and South Sudan. With previous reserves gone and mission feeding helping in areas of great famine, we urgently need your support to replenish food supplies to reach the 400,000 children who are counting on us. Your life-saving gift of $30, $50, or $100 will help feed and care for three, five, or 10 children. 
With your gift, we'll send you the James Code by O.S. Hawkins, an outstanding devotional to help you go from knowing about God to living for God and putting your faith into action. You'll also enjoy this beautifully crafted leather bookmark. With your gift of $100 or more, please request the Passion Translation Bible. This New Testament edition, including Psalms and Proverbs, ignites the passion of the Bible to modern readers by merging the passion of God's heart for His children with the life-changing truth of His Word. Finally, with your gift of $1,000 or more to help feed and care for 100 children, be sure to request our commemorative bronze sculpture, Safe in the Shepherd's Arms. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. Just remember, we are able to feed. The missionaries are able to be here because of the love of God, not just in their hearts, but in your heart. Those of you who support Life Outreach and respond to life today, why don't you go right now to the phone or go online and make the best gift you can. Help us feed three, five, or 10 of these children. I mean, if you could help feed 100, we'll do that. I don't know at what level you're led to participate, but for the three children or the five or the 10 children, it's important what you do today. We are feeding kids because of the love of God expressed through people. And it's very important that you pray that everyone who can will respond. Don't just pray, be the answer to a prayer. Respond and make the best gift you can. You've seen just how desperate the situation is here and I really hope that you've dialed that number on your screen. If you haven't been able to get through, please don't give up trying. Don't stop because these lives are relying on you. They really are. And so we need you to just persevere, push through and give that gift today. Guys, I want to thank you for being on this trip this week with us, for coming and, and, and seeing the work that's here, for also just sharing your hearts with the communities. You see how it just lifts them up and, and it just brings such a, a joy to them because they know that we're going to actually be here to help and save their lives. But we can only be here if you'll do what you can do, if you'll give the gift that, that you can give, the gift of life, the gift of love. So please make sure that you dial that number on your screen or you get online and you give that gift today. Give a gift, a special gift over and above what you would normally do because this crisis situation requires your emergency action. Thank you. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.